Hi everybody, I'm Tim Johnson, director of the Botanic Garden. Welcome once again to the Virtual Mum Show. We certainly wish you could be with us here in person, but the good news is we're getting great at producing videos. In a minute, you're going to hear from Dan Babineau and my Closter about some of the exciting things they put together for this year's show. Hello, my name is Dan Babineau. I'm a greenhouse horticulturist here at Smith College Botanic Garden. I've been here for eight years and I'm gonna bring you through the mum show and just talk about how I think about it and the process of putting it together. So right now we're, we're walking through the mum show and we are already planning for next year's show this week. Um, it usually starts with the students hybridizing mums uh, in our class and then we take those hybrids, um, we wait for the seed to, uh, to mature, and then we sow the seed in January. Um, this year we don't have any student hybrids, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. There was no class to make them. Um, so what you're seeing right now is just what we generally order, which happens again this week for next year. I have to figure out what mums uh, to grow and what works well. We have different styles of mums in here. For instance, <clears throat> this is one of our new ones. It's called an Edo mum. It's from Japan. Um, this one's called Jack Straw. It's one of my favorites. It definitely reminds me of just that October feel and that straw kind of texture. Um, we, we have some spider mums, the really large <clears throat> exhibition type of mums that just People are always amazed at, and just they lost quite a bit. There are these uh, pop mums. These are spoons. Uh, you can see on the floor, it's there. They kind of look like spoons. Just really cute. So I also enjoy making bonsai, and I figured um, if I'm going to be growing some mums, I can maybe experiment with some bonsai mums. So I generally go for a smaller mum with a very small flower. Um, so here is a nice um, plant that I mounted on a rock with the roots drooping down and the moss to give that illusion that it's been there a while. It might be hanging off a cliff <clears throat> and uh, the very small flowers to have a more of a balanced um, look to it. If the flowers are too big, it might look uh, just a little weird or unbalanced. Right here is some cascades. We grow them kind of down as if they were kind of, again, growing off a cliff. It's a more, um, uh, it's an approach that a lot of Japanese growers take and we're trying to uh, experiment more that way. Hi, um, I'm Mai Kloster and I am staking up these mums. They are clearly flopping over, um, which, doesn't look so nice. So I um, am staking them up. I just did that with this guy. Um, and now it looks a lot bushier. The flowers are together. It um, just looks more structured because it was, that one was also flopping over kind of like this one. Not as bad, but um, it is. The um, kind of the general, another like general problem about mums in general. I mean, it's not that bad, but it's just, they're very, very delicate. Um, and they're just constantly breaking off. Like, um, I, like I break off some stems as I'm pulling them up, but also like as I'm checking, there are already a lot of broken stems um, and broken flowers that break off. But, you know, then you can take them home and they look nice. So it's not all bad, but this is very fun. It's very satisfying to get them all neat and, um, uh, structured and they just they look nicer in order to have a nice big um flower cluster here we have to pinch the stem and when you do that it breaks out into two and you just keep pinching to bifurcate the stem which produces a lot of blooms that generally happens from june until september and that's a lot of student labor that's probably the most uh, laborsome and tedious work there is but it needs to be done <laughs> 
uh, to get as many flowers as we do. So here's a good example of pinching. So there was one stem growing here and then when we pinched it, two new stems came up. So we try to do that as much as possible because every time you pinch it, you're getting more stems, which means more flowers. So another uh, part of the student work here is they definitely help with these big flowers. In order to make these, you have to have one stem continuously grow and all the other stems you need to take off. Once it gets to the height you want it, and around now, they'll start making flowers and buds, we have to remove all of those buds and only keep one. When we do keep that one flower, all of the photosynthesis and energy is going into that plant, into the bud, and then it just becomes one flower. So when you have one flower, they just get much bigger. And when they do get tall, we also have to pin them. And here's a pin that we use, because if you don't pin them, they'll fall over. So it's just a constant <laughs> around the clock, keeping things straight and upright and preventing them from breaking.